Hey, good day and welcome. That tune here, playing there by Lynn Tate and the Jets. Nice time. Uh, interestingly, a couple of weeks ago, um, I went to a concert in Carl Spring in Florida. And um, it's a nice group of artists. Johnny Clark, hadn't seen Johnny Clark in a while. Big Youth, mm, not sure Big Youth belong on that stage. And um, a, 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 a trio which included Karen Smith and um, Jem Miles, can't remember the name of the other young man. But nice little show. Um, my, 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 my good friend and, and um, um, associated, uh, former Jerkfest executive, um, Sydney, put on that show. And it just reminded me of a conversation that I had at may have been a week or two earlier with my son and a couple of his friends who were visiting from Japan who uh, sat down in my living room, drink half a beer and we were talking about music and um, they turned to me, his friends in particular, and say, you know, you need to put your thoughts on record. Um, you exude a, a fair amount of knowledge about the music. I'm, I'm being a little modest there. But um, the truth be told, Jamaica has gifted this world with some five genres of music and um, we as Jamaicans tend to take that for granted, whereas people all over the world uh, try to gobble up our music. So I, I've decided to take them um, to their word and, and um, I am recording here some of my thoughts and I, I want to do a series of recordings like this where we... Um, take the time to look back, to reflect on where our music in Jamaica is coming from. And um, today I want to look at the, the rock steady era, specifically the, the, the contribution of a man um, such as the order of Lynn Tate. Um, before me, we are going to the, um, the details of the presentation, I want to give a little bit more of Lynn Tate's nice time. The aficionados of, of the music would recognize this um, as a Bob Marley tune. Nice time. Um, here we go. Listen to Lynn Tate and the Jets as he um, strum his melodic guitar and, and, and thump out a nice way. Here. Now, Lynn came to Jamaica in 1962 as part of a touring Calypso group. Um, 1962 was Jamaica's independence. In fact, the, the Calypsonian group had been touring the Caribbean and they decided to culminate their tour in Jamaica um, at the time in commemoration of Jamaica's independence. Unfortunately for Lynn Tate, um, after the series of shows ran, the Calypso, the main Calypso group, basically abandoned ship, went back to Trinidad and never paid him or his um, team of musicians that came with the group. So he got stuck here in Jamaica and that largely became fortuitous for us in Jamaica because Lynn Tate's guitar stylings, um, as we now know it, became the seminal element of what would become known in the particularly in the mid 1960s as the rock steady beat. Now I started this conversation by saying we gave the the, the, the music industry globally five um, genres of music. We started out with mentor, 
which is coming from the late 30s into the 40s, um, rolled itself into the 50s. That's sort of a fusion of uh, uh, Calypso and uh, you know different blues stylings, but largely percussion instrument. And then in the 1950s, we did the, the Skyi era. And um, Lin Tate in, in particular played a lot on a, a, a lot of ska sides at the time after his abandonment in Jamaica. And then we rolled into the 19, um, middle 1960s, which is essentially the shortest period of, of, of music or the shortest genre period of music in Jamaica, um, rock steady. And we followed through on that with reggae, which is now the, the, the big boy in the Jamaican music um, thing. And, and then um, finally, the DJ uh, dancehall music. So um, we've come a long way. You know, the question people always ask is, how could such a small place like Jamaica make such a big um, uh, contribution to global music? No other country. Uh, um, I would like to posit, has made that kind of contribution. No other country, rather, the size of, of Jamaica has made the kind of contribution, has had the kind of impact on the music that um, we all know take for granted, um, a large portion of which is influenced solidly by our Jamaican music. But um, to go back to a man like Alin Tate, Tate was used profusely as a session musician by the great, the late great Duke Reed um, in his Treasure Isle studio. And a lot of the big styling music that we, 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 we hear or coming out of the Rocksteady era um, was played on by, by Lin Tate. Lin Tate backed the great John Holt and the Paragons on the beach and, and you know, at in upcoming broadcast, we're going to take on some of that because I want to spend a little time on this rock steady thing. But um, significantly, Lin Tate was a man who, his guitar <coughs> was very, very unique. The stylings, the way he played, you heard it in, in, in music like Alton Ellis, Girl I've Got a Date. Um, I, I want to just look up that, that tune as we're talking here. Um, where Lin, Lin Tate um, guitar stylings featured heavily on that song. Um, Alton Ellis is one of my favorite. Um, and you, when you listen to Alton Ellis' music coming out of the period, you hear a lot of Lin Tate's guitar in this music. Um, let me just give you a little taste of that one. Um, Alton Ellis's Girl, I've Got a Date. Let me find it here. Yes, here we go. Alton Ellis's Girl I've Got a Date featuring the great Lynn Tate and the Jets. Um, my queuing system is giving me a little bit of worries here, but not to worry. Um, let's see. So, <clears throat> Lynn Tate started life in Trinidad as a steel pan player. He used to go around and uh, I mean, acquired some steel pan from some friends of his and uh, took it to his yard and his mother basically fling them away because she said boy if we go to school and um but he brushed them off and thing and i think to a large extent that kind of music that steel pan music um because he also loved to play the guitar as a youngster and the the steel pan music that was coming out of that out of it out of trinidad at the time would have helped to influence the his guitar song later on here is alton ellis's um, girl, I've got a date. Listen to the guitar in the background. Thank you. 
So you hear the distinctive guitar sound, as I say, influenced largely by that steel pan that um, that Tate grew up with coming out of Trinidad, and um, it, it, that sound became the predominant acoustic um, drive in a lot of the rock steady music that was coming out of the 1960s. Tate, in fact, formed a band that was called, um, the band was known at the time, Lynn Tate and the Jets. And that band featured some, some big names, um, big musician names. In those days, a lot of the musicians were coming out at the Alpha Boys School. And um, it, it sort of was, it was feeding off the Scatolites, um, Tommy McCook and the Supersonics um, musicians, who themselves were, while they played for, for these bands as, as um, band members, they floated around. So they would feature, thing. ultimately, Tate and the Jets became Treasure Isles in-house studio band. And so they backed a lot of artists. Um, the band consisted of people like Ox Brown, Hedley Benny, Hopeton Lewis, Gladstone Anderson, Winston Wright. But it is Lynn Tate's guitar that fired the, the imagination. Joe Creed uh, solidified his hold on the music um, at the time, the, particularly the rock steady beat, because of Lynn Tate's sound. And as a consequence, a lot of the big artists of the period, the John Holtz I, I mentioned earlier, John Holt would ultimately go on to lead the Paragons. And um, John, John Holt and the Paragons recorded heavily with, with um, Treasure Isle. Uh, the, the same with people like Alton Ellis, who did a lot of work, um, Willow Tree, um, the, the same girl I've got a date there, just to name a, a, a couple of the sides that Wilt and Alice, uh, Wil, um, Alton Ellis did, backed by um, Lynn Tate. So Lynn Tate, without question, big part of, of Jamaica's rock steady music era. Um, we, we, you know, I don't want to tie it on too much with this thing here, but I want us to, you know, I want to bring you back at another time. Because Jamaica music is a big music. Um, yes, five pieces. And we're going to look at all five sets of this music. But today, we're looking at the rock steady. And the next time you join me, we're going to take on some more of the, the, the rock steady era. In the meantime, tell your friend. Right? Join me on, on my little YouTube channel um, where we, we're going to do more of these kind of presentations um, looking at the, 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 the one thing that all Jamaicans can identify with is our music. The biggest music in the world from one of the smallest places in the world. Biggest sound, a sound that everybody all over the world is trying to, to capitalize on. And while they're talking about um, reggae music, I will invite you to um, a, 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 get a piece of Jamaica's reggae. Right? This is a shirt that I've, I produced as well, um, coming out of my own artistic catalog, um, not sold in stores. You can only buy this on my website. So um, my website is yadabra.com or you look for the shirts mine and, and um, pick up one, pick up a dozen, give a friend them. But this is me signing out. Join me again next time.